Hey, Voucher Scam listeners, Nicole Abshire here. And I'm Claire Campos O'Neill. Before we dive into today's episode, we have a favor to ask. We've created the Voucher Scam to help people understand exactly what education vouchers are and why they are a threat to democratic values. We have been making this podcast in real time and funding it as we go. We are able to make this show available to listen to for free through our own contributions and the support of friends and family. But we need help. We still need to raise $7,000 to finish this series. If you are able to give to this project, please consider doing so. This show is a part of the Mothers for Democracy Institute, which is a 501c3, so your gift is tax deductible. If you have already donated, thank you so much for your support. The donation link is in the show notes. Now, part of the reason we hope you'll support our show is because our podcast is actually helping to get the word out. So far, we have been successful in blocking vouchers in Texas. More and more people are convinced that vouchers are indeed a scam. But the fight is by no means over. So here's the update about what's going on in the Texas legislature. On November 7th, Governor Greg Abbott called a fourth special session. A few days after the start of the session, the Texas Senate passed a voucher bill. This wasn't surprising. The Senate and the governor have always been aligned on vouchers. But the Texas House is a different story. In the previous session, the one that Abbott called in October, the voucher bill never made it past the House committee. But this time it did. So the fact that this bill is now up for a House floor vote means that the risk of vouchers passing has gone up. On an alarm scale of 1 to 10, if we were at a 7 before, we've now moved up to an 8 or higher. So you might be wondering what changed from this last special session to this special session. Well, Governor Abbott gave his blessing to add some school funding to the voucher bill so it was slightly more palatable for House members to advance. This is a huge step forward for voucher proponents. Texas House representatives have not gone on the record voting for or against vouchers up to this point. But this week, they will vote. This is the vote. We're releasing this episode on Thursday, November 16th, so it's unclear what will happen. One thing we do know is that Governor Abbott has promised to call more special sessions if vouchers fail again. You might be wondering, why can't Abbott let this go? And to be honest, we're wondering the same thing. We don't know for sure, but we have some ideas. Though he's never said it publicly, it's likely Governor Abbott wants to be considered for national office. The fact that vouchers keep failing is a big problem for him. It makes him look weak. He's probably also getting a lot of pressure from his donors to get vouchers passed. The Texas House stands in his way, and it seems like his strategy is to just wear them down by calling session after session. But there is a reason to hope. The fact that we are in a stalemate in Texas, a state that is totally Republican-controlled in every statewide office, says a lot about the unpopularity of vouchers here. The longer this battle goes on, the more our voices are heard. So as all this plays out, we want to continue to use this podcast as a way to help people understand what's going on and to keep attention on this issue. To do that is going to require that we keep growing this community. Something we've been reminded of in this series is that we tend to take public schools for granted. And voucher proponents take advantage of that. They're working hard to sow distrust in public schools and push the narrative that schools are failing students. But there is an antidote, and that is celebrating the amazing things happening in our public schools. Which is why, today on the show, we're going to hear from you. In our last episode, we asked you to call in and share your stories with us. The first question we asked is, what do you love about your public schools? My name is Rachel, and I live in Austin, Texas. I am a parent of a kindergartner who goes to our local public school. Something that I love about our local public school is the connection to community as well as the opportunities to volunteer at the school. You can volunteer on a a small scale by being a morning reader and reading to the students or being more involved in advocacy committees as well as teacher support and many other aspects of 
what it means to run a school. Hi, my name is Debbie. My children graduated from Texas public schools. They earned the right to select where they wanted to go to college. Both of my children earned scholarships to go to out-of-state universities by their own choice. Without their public school education in Texas, they would not have been competitive to be able to have the careers that they have now, to go to the colleges that they wanted to go to create the world that they want to live in. So without this wonderful Texas public education that we've all benefited from, they wouldn't be where they are right now. Hi, my name is Genevieve and I'm a parent in San Antonio. My daughter goes to Jackson Middle School and she is loving being able to do all of the sports now that she's in seventh grade. She's already done volleyball, cross country, and now in basketball, she's going to do track and tennis um, and soccer. So I think that the opportunity that she has to be able to do all of this is fabulous. And my son goes to Churchill High School. It's so great because he's on the tennis team. He's on the drum line of the award-winning Churchill Marching Band. And he is also in a officer in the Model UN Club. And they're going to New York this spring break to the real UN. So just all these opportunities are helping him decide who he is and who he's going to be when he grows up. And I think that all the choice they have is just absolutely amazing. My name is Kat, and I'm a parent in Frisco ISD. I love that our children attend diverse schools with students of all different faiths, ethnicities, gender and sexual identities, and backgrounds of all kinds. As the son of a single immigrant mom, my husband depended on public school services to bridge the gap and reach his full potential. He now gives back to our community as a fire captain and as a prime example of why fully funding our schools benefits us all in Texas. My name's Christina. And I am from the state of Missouri. I've been a public school teacher for the past eight years. What I love about my public school is that we teach students self-efficacy. We teach them find their voice and how to become an active member in their community. Uh, Public schools do this best when not marred by the weight of constant standardized testing. What I also love about public schools is that we teach all students We don't cherry pick. And when our students fail or falter or make a mistake or they don't make the right grades or test scores, we don't kick them out. We also asked our listeners to offer their thoughts about this fight over vouchers in Texas and in other states. I believe that vouchers are treating students like a product. I believe that public dollars go to public schools and that you accept all children, no matter their background or their ability level. I'm concerned that students, specifically in privatized schools, will not be treated the same. It's a a downward slope towards discrimination towards different types of people. I have seen this happen here in the state of Missouri, and that's why I'm speaking up and listening to what is happening in Texas. Hi, my name's Mary. I uh, currently live in Northern Kentucky, but was raised and worked in the public education system in Arizona, and as well as worked in the public education system in Kentucky. And I can say on both sides, I watched what vouchers and charters did to the public education system in Arizona, and it went from being okay to being just a wasteland where so much funding was siphoned off of the public education system for these charters and the vouchers that are not working the way they're supposed to. And in a lot of cases, don't have to follow any of the rules and regulations that public schools have to follow. So they get to pick and choose what students they allow. If they decide a family is problematic in any way, they can kick them out for no reason. There's no regulations to stop them from doing that. Whereas public schools can't do that. Public schools have to accept everyone and voucher systems create this huge loophole around it and pull even more funding out of public education. When it comes to vouchers, we're petrified about them. We live in San Antonio, which means we were one of the epicenters for the um, charter school openings. And we've seen what happens to our schools when 
friends leave to choose elsewhere. And if that happens with private schools, it's going to be even worse. Not to mention the fact that majority of the people that are going to take vouchers already go to private school. So all we're doing is giving more money to the wealthy. So it's very frustrating. How am I feeling about vouchers in Texas? Uh, Just disappointed that we're at this place yet again. My name's Valerie Mancha. I'm from Fort Worth, Texas. I grew up in a small town. I attended uh, public school in the Crowley ISD. Everyone knew each other and we knew the kids whose parents were teachers um, or whose mom or dad worked for the police department. One of my close friends growing up, his mother was a police officer. Parents who worked for the fire department, post offices, doctor's offices, uh, parents who were veterans or had served in the military, and so on. I owe so much to them for keeping our town safe and functioning. And this is a middle-class town that looks like so many of our towns here in Texas. I would bet that most of these public servants went to public schools. And and same with their kids that I grew up with. Uh, They probably still do now. Now our governor is trying to dismantle the public schools for what, to appease his donors? How is this a repayment to the people who have kept our local cities and towns safe and healthy and productive? It it just doesn't. It's like turning your back on these hardworking people who just want the best for their families. It is truly sad that this is what Texas leadership has come to, taking away from children. Mothers are very activated about this right now, and uh, we're going to keep fighting for our kids. My name is Keely, and I am currently a resident in New Mexico. We moved here about a year ago, but the rest of my life I spent in Texas, and I've been in public education for 23 years. And I just want to say that vouchers are bad for all students. While I recognize that there are some things in public schools that need to be addressed, vouchers is simply not the answer. The truth is, students that are on the lowest level of performance and are struggling to learn academically, public schools are their lifeline. And the reality is, when we can increase outcomes for students In marginalized areas, students in high need, we all rise. We all rise. Please don't let down all the other students who are depending on our state for a quality education. Do not go the voucher route. Let's stay with Texas public schools. Thank you to everyone who called in. Let's continue to work together to stop vouchers. Remember, it's not too late to call your legislator and let them know what you think about vouchers. And check out our resource guide. We'll see you in two weeks for the final episode of The Voucher Scam.